Hey folks, in this video we are going to learn how to dedupe a list from a Google Sheets workbook using Google Apps Script. So what you see here is an example spreadsheet that has some data and there is a column here with professional football team names. So you can see that we have duplicated names here for each line item. Uh, so we're going to use uh, this column in order to get a dedupe list so that we have a unique or a distinct list of team names. We're going to begin by navigating to the extensions menu, and then we're going to open a new Google Apps Script project file. We are going to begin on line two. Actually, you know what? We'll title our project. I'm going to say dedupe list. Uh, we're going to begin on line two. We're going to hit enter. And the first thing that we're going to need to do is access the workbook. We're going to hit enter and tab. We're going to declare a variable of WB. And we're going to set that equal to spreadsheet app. And then we're going to use a dot method. And this is going to depend on the structure of your project. I'm using a bound app script project, which means that it was created from the spreadsheet that I am looking to access. That means that I have the ability to use dot get capital A active spreadsheet. And I can use an open parentheses. I can hit the right arrow and add a semicolon. And now I've accessed my workbook. If you're attempting to access a workbook that is not bound to your app script project, then you're going to have to use one of two alternative methods. Both are going to reference spreadsheet app. The first is spreadsheet app dot open by ID. That is my preferred way of referencing workbooks, especially unbound workbooks. You also could use spreadsheet app .open by URL. Once you determine what method is best for you, you're going to resume on line four, where you will hit enter twice, hit the left arrow twice, add two slashes for a comment, and now you will define the sheet you want to access. You're going to hit enter and tab, and you're going to declare a variable called sheet, and you'll set that equal to wb.getSheet by name. And you'll have an open parenthesis. Get sheet by name takes a single argument. It needs to be structured as a string. So you're going to either use single quotes or double quotes, whatever you've been using to this point in your project. I'm going to go back to my project where you can see that I am using sheet one. So you can either double click on sheet one and copy it, or you can just type it into the get sheet by name method. So I'm going to paste it in there and hit the right arrow on my keyboard, add a semicolon, I'm going to hit enter twice, hit the left arrow twice, two slashes for a comment, and now we will um, collect the data from the column we want to dedupe. I'm going to hit enter and tab, and we're going to declare a variable called data, and we're going to set it equal to sheet.get capital R range. We're going to open up a parentheses. So you're going to have to evaluate your data. My data exists in column two, and I don't want to include the, the header row in line one. So I'm going to be starting at row two, column two, which means this cell here. So you just need to adjust for whatever your column is. Get range has a starting index of one, which means the first row is represented by a one. The first column is represented by a one. The second row is represented by a two, and the second column is represented by a two. So I want to work starting at the second row and the second column. So in my get range method, I'm going to use two for the starting row, comma, two for the starting column. I'm going to use a comma, and then I'm going to use some uh, dynamic functions in order to calculate my range size, which is the number of rows that I want to go. So I'm going to use that sheet variable from line seven, and then I'm going to use get capital L last row. I'm going to have an open parentheses. So get last row will return the row number uh, with the last row that has a non-null value, meaning something is entered into at least one cell of that row, and it is the last row that has any data entry. So in this case, my last row with data or my last row with a non-null value is line 21. So when I use sheet.getLastRow, I'm returning the number 21. Now, this is a problem because I'm starting at row two, 
and sheet.getLastRow row returns the number 21. Within get range, the third argument is the number of rows that you want to go. So we are returning that we want to go 21 rows. But the problem with that is that we're starting at row 2. So we're not going to stop at row number 21. We're literally going to go 21 rows. So if we do not normalize this uh, get sheet get or sheet.getLast row function to be normalized for our data size, meaning remove one, then we're going to get an extra row in our list. So after sheet.getLast row, we're going to hit space minus one, and now we are getting the appropriate amount of data. So the final argument of get range is using um, number of columns you want to go. We only want to go one column because we just want this list so that we can dedupe it. You don't have to enter in the one because it will understand that if you don't enter anything, then you just want one. So we're going to hit the right arrow once. We're outside of our get range, and now we're going to use dot get display values, and we'll have an open parentheses. Get display values will return the formatted values in there. This is fine because we're working with a string, uh, so we don't care that it comes back as a string. We're going to hit the right arrow. We're going to add a semicolon. We're going to hit enter twice, two slashes for a comment, and now we're going to log out that data. So we're going to hit enter and tab, and we'll use logger dot log, open parentheses, and then we're going to pass in that data variable. So we're going to see what the data structure is that we're working with, and we also want to run our code so that we can allow access to the spreadsheet app. So we're going to hit run. We are going to review permissions. We're going to select our account. We will go to Advanced, and we are going to select this line item here that says Unsafe. The only reason it says that is because Google hasn't verified this code, and it just wants you to know that it has not verified. Therefore, it's up to you to make sure that it's not doing anything malicious, which it is not, so you can hit Allow. Now you can see that we are returning all of the data from uh, the column that we want, and it's structured in a two-dimensional array which means that each row is represented by an array, and you can tell that that's the case because they are contained in uh, square brackets. Uh, so what we're going to do now is we are going to flatten the names, which means that we are going to uh, remove or access them outside of their individual arrays, uh, and I believe the structure will be one array. So we're going to hit enter twice, left arrow four times, two slashes for a comment, and we will say flatten the names. So we'll hit enter and tab. I will declare a variable called flat capital N names, and we'll set that equal to our data variable dot flat, open parentheses, right arrow on our keyboard, add a semicolon, hit enter twice, two slashes for a comment where we will log it out. We'll hit enter and tab, and we'll do logger dot log, open parentheses, and we will pass in flat names. Hit the right arrow, add a semicolon, and now we will run our code. And now you can see our two-dimensional array has been flattened to a one-dimensional array, which means that all of the names now appear as comma-separated values instead of being arrays separated by commas. So now that we have flat names, we can use the new set method in order to get the dedupe names, also known as the distinct names or the unique names. So we're going to hit enter twice, left arrow on our keyboard four times, two slashes for a comment where we will use new set to um, create an array of distinct names. So we're going to enter and tab, and we'll declare a variable called unique, capital N, names, and we'll set it equal to square bracket. And then we will use three dots, which is the spread syntax. And then we will use new space capital S set and use an open parentheses where we will pass in our flat names variable. We'll hit the right arrow twice. We'll hit enter twice, two slashes for a comment. And now we will log out our unique names variable. So we'll hit enter and tab, and we'll do logger.log, 
open parentheses, unique, capital N, name. So we'll go to the right, add a semicolon, hit run. And now you can see we had a two-dimensional array where each of our names were within an array. We converted it so that all of the names were in a one-dimensional array. And then we used new set with the spread syntax in order to get a list of unique names. So now we can send this data somewhere else, or we can use the names in um, other logic in order to loop through our data. And we have created a new dimension or dynamic to our project. I hope you found this video helpful. If you're looking for more ways of using Google Spreadsheets and Google Apps Script to automate your projects, then please check out my channel page.